When a new van like the fourth generation 2021 Toyota Sienna hits the market, I see the opportunity for a public service announcement of sorts. Yeah, SUVs and crossovers have the rugged image buyers want, even for those people that don't camp or go off road. But nothing makes family life easier than a van. There's more room for people in cargo. It's easier for the youngins to scamper in and out, same for older people. They're effectively family rooms on wheels. If we'd all have known how crazy things would become in March of 2020, maybe Sienna, Chrysler Pacifica, Honda Odyssey, and Kia Carnival, uh, that used to be called Sedona, would be more popular today. Maybe vans will finally get the love they deserve. The whole COVID-19 thing has caused a lot of people to change their lifestyles. I mean, think about it. Restaurant delivery and takeout are way up. Air travel? is way down. A lot of people are working remotely on Zoom and Teams, and many are dressing much more casually these days. Frankly, I'm embracing the changes. You're looking at a top trim platinum model with front wheel drive and the entertainment system. This Lexus level of family serenity retails for $53,800. If that's too much, a base LE starts at $35,600. There's even the XSE Sport model with tuned suspension. Designers inspired by Japanese Shinkansen bullet trains have given Sienna a tougher look. There's all sorts of Yakima outdoor gear that's available to bolt on. It wouldn't be a Toyota without maximum grill. The door track is well camouflaged along the window line instead of a gaping slash on the side flanks. To get deep contours, the tailgate is molded resin. Toyota seems to be very happy with the design language. Uh, let me read some copy from the press kit about the sportier looking model. With dark 20 inch wheels and aggressive bumpers front and rear unique to the XSE model, this one looks like it's born on a racetrack. Clearly the pandemic has affected some people more than others. Uh, okay. The biggest change? Sienna ditches the V6 for hybrid power. The gas side is 189 horsepower, 2.5 liter, four cylinder running the Atkinson cycle. The main drive motor is a 180 horse electric unit for a total of 245 horsepower. Remember, power figures aren't simply added up. If this had the available all-wheel drive, a 54 horsepower electric motor would power the back wheels and would cost around two grand more. The four cylinder stays dormant until it's needed. If the nickel metal hydride battery located under the front seats is well charged, Sienna can run short distances at low speed on electric power only. Love the mechanical feel of the selector controlling the eCVT. Uh, you've come to the wrong place for paddle shifters. Sport mode kicks in some extra power from the hybrid system. Sienna weighs about 4,700 pounds and there's 245 horsepower motivating it. So, you know, manage your expectations. This is a family van, but still zero to 60 in under eight seconds. Uh, that's not half bad. That instant torque makes city driving feel friskier than it is. If power's your thing, Odyssey and the standard Pacifica offer up a little bit more oomph. The Chrysler is the only other van with all-wheel drive. The Toyota system can send 80% of power to the rear wheels during launch and is programmed to reduce understeer. As far as the dynamic and the feel of the powertrain, well, this is a Toyota and it does hybrid powertrains really well. Sort of like driving a big Prius if you've driven those. The gas engine feathers in very nicely. It's all very smooth. Traditional powertrains have a more familiar sound and feel when the go pedal is dropped. Pay attention on the test drive. Sienna gives drivers what they want. The seating position is elevated, low decibels at speed, and a compliant suspension keep it as comfy as your favorite robe and slippers. I oughta know. Sienna is very easy to drive, better than even the best body on frame SUV. It's very car like because, well, it's based on that kind of architecture. It is large though, it's like a room in your house. The only thing this 
doesn't have is a shower and a refrigerator. Otherwise, I could live in this. A fridge and vacuum option was canceled due to supplier issues. Dang you, COVID-19. A shower? Well, that was never part of the plan. You could always drive to the Y. The only thing Sienna does better than family hauling is fuel economy. The EPA rates this front wheel drive version at 36 miles per gallon. Now, when it comes to city fuel economy, it's nearly twice as good as the outgoing V6 Sienna. That is impressive. That said, Pacifica is available as a plug-in hybrid that easily charges overnight using a standard 120 volt outlet. It doesn't need to be charged, but fully juiced, there's 32 miles of all electric range, a huge advantage for efficiency fans. You'll be logging a lot of miles in this, doing errands, running the kids around, so the brake pedal dynamic is important. The transition from regenerative braking to the actual physical disc brakes is pretty good. Oh, sorry, somebody behind me. They're trying to get their kids to piano lessons. Sienna is stuffed with standard active electronic safety tech like automatic emergency braking, a good lane keeping assist, and adaptive cruise control. In short, the Toyota Safety Sense 2.0 suite is well done, and Sienna can tow up to 3,500 pounds. One thing I'll point out, when you put your foot hard into the throttle, you'll definitely hear the engine. It does have sort of that rubber bandy CVT kind of dynamic. Again, pay attention to the sound and feel of the hybrid system to make sure it's right for you. Platinum models are pretty swanky with upgraded materials. Heated and vented leather seats are found on limited models too, but this noble brown colorway is a platinum exclusive. All Siennas have this layout that's a cross between family transportation and the Starship Enterprise. Twin armrests surround a very deep storage bay. It holds enough masks and hand sanitizer to equip Texas for a year, mostly because they won't use them. Oh, roll with the joke, my brother lives in Dallas. This area right here would be great for a purse or a backpack. I am using it as a pantry. The only thing wrong with this is this. Uh, it's big, it's imposing, and it really does separate you from the passenger, and it's not removable. Personally, I like it. This shelf has wireless phone charging and space to lay out post-soccer practice snacks. Even the doors have loads of nooks for knickknacks. There are up to 18 cup holders, seven USB ports, and a partridge in a pear tree. Some apartments have less closet space. The JBL audio is solid enough, you'll start exploring new music. This guy's pretty good. There is a way to see who hit who first. It is kind of small. The optional digital rear view mirror is handy when Sienna is loaded to the ceiling. Toyota's user interface is as pragmatic as the brand itself. Would have been nice to have wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay since there's wireless charging. The touchscreen is moderately responsive. The graphics are fine. Voice commands are basic. The HVAC controls are straightforward. There are enough hard buttons to simplify life. The surround view camera system has a few tricks up its sleeve. This might entertain the kids for a minute or two. I'm using this space as a mobile office because I've got everything I need here. Power for the computer. There are two kinds of USB ports, so it's really easy to charge up phones. And there's even a Wi-Fi hotspot, so I can upload videos to YouTube and I can watch what I'm editing on the home entertainment screen. Pretty darn cool, huh? Climate zone, of course, it's dual zone. Like all vans, the floor is nice and flat, so it's easy to move around in. Uh, lots and lots of cup holders. These are really very clever. They'll hold just about anything. And if you're looking for a first class van experience, these seats in the Platinum are heated. They have an awful lot of travel. They recline quite a bit. Plus, they have an ottoman to think that the kids are gonna be back here. Getting to the way back is super simple. Vans have lower floors that make loading and unloading easier than SUVs. I'm trying to make life easier for you. Really, I am.
As far as headroom goes, I am five foot nine and I have just enough. Sienna can seat up to eight if you order the base model with the bench seat. Platinum is strictly a seven seater and I would lower expectations by one on all models because three adults will not want to sit back here. Maybe your favorite plush toy in the middle is best. Uh, as far as footroom goes, the seat is about midway and there's more than I would expect. The seats though, on the low and short side, so thigh support isn't all that great, but really, it's much better than most SUVs back here. If you've got a handful of toddlers, this is a very nice thing to have. Sliding doors, you don't have to worry about your kids pranging other people's cars. Here is why vans are infinitely more practical than an SUV if you're often using the third row. There is so much more cargo space behind the third row. For comparison, the new Chevy Tahoe takes on seven and that's with its improved back end and load in and out is made easier with lower deck height. Sienna's optional inverter handles 1500 watts, great for camping. Plan on removing the mid rows for massive hauling jobs? No can do, and they don't fold into the floor either. This is the best you're gonna get. Seats are not powered, but the composite frames are light and easy to drop and raise. And hey, the gyms have been closed. It could be your only workout. Apparently, four by eight sheets of plywood will fit upright between the seats, not flat on the floor. I can only bring out 20 packs of TP anymore and I can't see when pushing them out. Plus, uh, slippers don't have much traction. A pallet of TP is heavier than you might think. It appears 24 packs would fit. The SUV champs are Buick Enclave, Chevy Traverse, and VW Atlas, all at 19. You know, not that long ago, this much TP on the black market would have paid for this rig. Time for red light, green light. Green light, 36 miles per gallon from a family vehicle that seats up to eight, borderline magical, and sets an example of responsibility for the kids. Uh, they're always watching. Vans are supremely useful more than any other vehicle, unless you need to tow more than 3,500 pounds. Sienna is available in a wide variety of models from let the kids destroy it basic to sporty to luxurious. It's the only all wheel drive hybrid van on the market. Yellow lights, love the fuel economy, but people unfamiliar with hybrid powertrains may find the dynamic odd and Pacifica hybrid is the efficiency king. The nooks and storage are exceptionally well done. The front console bridge might be a bit high for some. The bold Shinkansen meets SUV design sheds some of the van stigma, but come on, we all know it's a van. Red light, the mid row seats are not removable and don't drop into the floor for maximum hauling. Without a panoramic glass roof, things get dark in the back rows. The short low cushions in the third row are only good for shorter trips when it comes to adults. To be fair, that's better than SUVs and pretty common with vans. Notice I don't say minivan, that's a conscious decision. None of them are small anymore. Sienna is 28 inches longer, six inches wider, and five inches higher than the original Chrysler van, which is why it's so roomy and useful. I know, I know, I know, vans have a certain stigma, but man, they are so useful. You should really consider at least test driving one so you know what you're missing, okay? I also suggest wearing a robe all the time. It's very comfortable. Maybe this past year of living differently will make buyers reassess what's important, that comfort and ease of use take precedent. Your friends all know you're not gonna go rock climbing every weekend. Sienna puts family first. Embrace coziness. I know I have. Two things before I go. Uh, first, a bit of driven trivia. This is the first review I've done in well over a decade where I didn't wear jeans because it's all I wear. Secondly, I wrote a New York Times story about vans a while back and I talked to executives from Honda, Stellantis, and Toyota. All of them had the same surprising insight. Research shows that guys kind of like vans. It's women that don't want the mommy mobile perception. Uh, it's funny. We all want to find Mr. or Ms. Wright, but once achieved, we don't want to telegraph our success. My wife was not a van person until we took a camping trip in a town and country. After that, she was such a convert, she seriously considered buying one, even though our kids were older and we didn't need one. I'm just saying, test drive, 
rent one for a road trip. I'm trying to make your life easier. This is the end time for the fun fact. Did you know that Ford could have been the originator of the minivan? When Lee Iacocca was there, he tried to get it built. No go. He moved to Chrysler. The rest is history. Now, you might be asking yourself, Tom, where do I get a fine pair of bunny slippers like this? Well, you know the movie A Christmas Story with Ralphie who wanted the BB gun? You'll shoot your eye out. Well, turns out that organization has an online store. You can get bunny slippers, you can even get the leg lamp, and for an extra cost, they'll ship it in a wood crate that says Fragile. And if you're a huge fan of the movie, you can even sleep overnight at the house. It's in Cleveland. Check it out. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe. That's Driven, a little bit more casually this time. I'm Tom Volk. Tell ya, you haven't lived until you've hung out in a Costco parking lot in your bathrobe with 20 bundles of toilet paper and bunny slippers.